Today on Outside the Box Reviews, we were taking a look at the NECA Predator 2 pack for 2011. Last year, as I've previously reviewed, we had the Alien vs. Predator 2 pack. And over the course of this year, I guess NECA switched factories, so... So during the switch, I guess they weren't able to have access to their Alien mold like they wanted to. I'm assuming what they'd wanted to do was... Aliens, Alien, and Predator 2, Predator. But that wasn't to be, so they dug out another Predator for us, which is the Berserker Predator from the movie Predators. And really interesting to get this one because this incarnation of Berserker was a display item that they used at conventions for a while and was never supposed to really go into production. I think they'd said at one point they weren't going to bother releasing it because it was just a promotional item. But here we finally do have it to take home and have for ourselves. And the thing I was really looking forward to in this pack, and the thing that shines out in this pack more than anything else, is of course the City Hunter with the mask. So let's take a look at these guys separately and go over them. First up we have the Super Predator Skull. Really well done. Of course it's reminiscent of last year where we got the normal Predator Skull, so it's kind of cool to have the two of these side by side for comparison. Really neat, they did a good job sculpting it. It doesn't have a whole lot of weathering on it, it looks pretty fresh and cleaned off. The lower jaw is articulated, these little mandibles are not. But the mandibles are huge, I know that's how it was in the movie, but just seeing it in the bow and makes it look ridiculous. But it's a really cool skull. It'll be good for a display. The other piece we get is the human skull and spine. This is a reused and repainted accessory. The San Diego Comic Con exclusive had the bloody skull and spine. So it's the exact same piece just with a different paint job. Which is cool because you have your trophy spine and you have your freshly ripped out spine. And here we have the cloaked Berserker Predator... Wait, wait, where'd he go? Right, I had a Berserker Predator here. It, it disappeared on me. I can't, I can't see it. This is just weird. Okay, I know I'm not fooling anyone. The Berserker Predator comes with a little cardboard standee. If you have any of the Iron Maiden figures that NECA's done lately, it's the same thing. You slide it in behind him, line it up with his body, and it kind of looks like he's invisible. It's okay. It's nothing special, and I would much rather have seen this released as a single pack with this figure with the tree as an actual sculpted piece, as opposed to this lame little background that's going to look like an obvious little portrait behind him, and that my fan's blowing everywhere. But for what was probably a very cheap pack-in, it's kind of nice to have. It's, it's unique. I don't even know if I'm going to display him with it. Berserker also comes with two wrist blades. First up, we have the standard long blade, which I'm glad they gave us the long blade. The long blade originally came with the Falconer Predator. The original Berserker came with the very short blade. You can see the height difference here. So it's really cool that we have the long blade. He also came with a transparent long blade, and it's probably hard to tell on camera here, but this is a transparent long blade. Same exact shape. And you can peg either one right into his wrist here. It's very loose. For my personal preference, I'm probably going to keep the transparent blade with him. Since this is my third Berserker Predator, I'm probably going to keep the solid blade with one of the other two. Maybe the unmasked one. Just to have some variance across the set. I'm not a big fan of the Berserker having the tiny little blade. I can make use of both of them. Berserker himself is just a repaint of a repaint. We have the original right here on the left that I've already reviewed a long time ago, it feels. Which is still a nice figure. It's the exact same body. But I believe we really have, making it the repaint of the repaint, is there was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive over a year ago, about a year and a half ago, that was the clear cloaked Berserker Predator. And this chair is... The same cloaked body, but has some paint on it to make it kind of match the tree display. So I'm thinking they just took that same Predator and painted it up. It's still a cool figure. He has this really nice bio mask. The lower jaw here on mine is kind of sticking out at the bottom. 
I might need to glue it and mold it back into the side of his mask a little better. I learned recently that this jaw is supposed to be from an alien skull. I don't know how true that is, but I heard people saying that. It's kind of interesting. Uh, he's got some good detail on his body. A lot of the detail, however, is lost from the lack of paint. Everything just kind of becomes muddled and hazy. But if you have the other one on display, you have something to look at. Plus, we also have the unmasked version of the same body, at least. The translucent, transparent plastic, it looks really cool. It's pretty see-through. has a really neat ghost effect. I like it the best back here on his dreadlocks and his armor. It's really cool looking, and the transparent plasma caster is really neat. Just the full transparent piece. It's a really interesting repaint. If he was single carded, I probably would never pick him up. Unless maybe he came with the actual tree that I was talking about earlier. But he's a cool figure overall. He's got the standard articulation for the Berserker. He's got the ball jointed head. Of course the gun can swivel to all directions and spin the barrel. I don't know if that counts as articulation, but we'll go over it. Pin socket arms. Bend rotate at the elbow. Ball jointed wrist. Is a ball jointed waist. Is a V cut crotch. Rotate the upper leg. Bend and pivot at the knee. And technically a ball joint at the foot, but it acts more like a swivel because of his high boots. Ironically enough, having this guy in hand makes me want to go back and try to find that San Diego Comic Con exclusive figure. Which seems a bit weird because it'd be my fourth Berserker Predator. <laughs> and it seems a little excessive. But one thing I also fortunately have or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, is an extra medium blade because my tracker predator head broke. So I almost feel like you could take the full cloaked one and put the short blade on him and put him in the back in one pose. And then you could take this guy and put the medium blade and have him in a slight variation of that pose. And then up in the front you could put the totally uncloaked version and another slight variance of that pose to almost make it look like he's going from totally transparent to uncloaking to fully visible in a series of three figures. I think that could be a pretty cool display. So if I can find a good price on that old San Diego one, I might scoop it up for that purpose. Moving on, we've got the Masked City Hunter. Now even though we just got the original City Hunter and it's the same exact figure with a different head, I'm really excited to have this guy because the biggest flaw of the other City Hunter is the paint flaws on its head. So having this nice mask on him makes up for a lot of those issues. The mask is really nice, pretty darn accurate to the film. Has a nice coppery color to it, even to the effect that there's some kind of green in between. The eyes have a nice mesh, as is movie accurate. It's really, really cool. Plus, you finally have a reason to get the Plasma Caster out in here. Unfortunately, the channel for my Plasma Caster is a little warped, so the gun does not stay in there as well as it should. If I keep having this problem, I might just swap out the bodies of these two, since the other City Hunter is most likely not going to have the Plasma Caster out, and this guy had actually wanted up and forward, so I might just do a swap. As for the rest of the body, I'm not going to get too into it. It's the same as the other City Hunter that I've already reviewed, and pretty darn recently, I might add. But it's a good body, good sculpt. The paint apps aren't nearly as shiny. If I bring in the other one again, you can see there's almost kind of a gloss on this one. You can almost even feel it. There's more of a gloss on this guy, and this guy does not have it as much. I don't know, since the end mass is from later in the movie, maybe he's all sweaty from running around LA in the heat. It's a weak defense, but why not? He's still got his little man purse over here and his belt. Uh, my favorite part is the uh, the rubber butt. Gotta, gotta love that detail. His armor's well sculpted. His dreads are the usual good that we get out of them. I've got no complaints about this figure. He's a much more solid figure than his counterpart. He's got his extendable blades here as usual. The holster for his disc and the disc itself. Though once again he won't hold it correctly. He doesn't have the hand made for it. I kinda wish they would have swapped out and given us Boar's hand over here so he'd have a way to hold the disc. As far as other accessories he comes with 
an interchangeable hand, a gripping hand. But wait, there's something wrong with his hand. What? Hold on. So evidently our predator here uh, is Michael Jackson. Yeah, uh, you can see on this hand there is a glove on the hand, a fingerless glove. And there's no little claw back here. We take a look at the predator's actual hand. There is no glove. There is some wrappings and such, but no glove. And he has a little extra claw coming out of his wrist. Ah, NECA, 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 why did you have to do this? So let's pop this hand on him, and for the hell of it, let's put the Skull Trophy in it. And how about we bring in, I don't know, how about Gort Predator? You notice something? Yeah, NECA just gave us the same hand, repainted, and the same skull, repainted. I understand it's cheaper to reuse parts. I understand it saves them money on tooling. However, they went through all this trouble to give us the new Predator body, this really cool new Predator body, not reusing parts. And I even said in my reviews of those figures, I was so excited to be getting some Predators that weren't reusing parts. And what do they do? They reuse a part like that so quickly in a way that's totally wrong. And I know it's me being a little overreacting to this whole thing, because it's not that huge of a deal. But to me it is. To me it's just an annoyance, and it feels like I've been cheaped out on my figure a little bit. Which, it just disappoints me overall. You know what, at least NECA gave us some cool stuff to stick in that hand. We got our spear. This is the folded up version. Really nice. It actually even has a little control panel with some red predator lettering in there which is really a nice touch really cool looking and then we have the full-on extended version which is a phenomenal add-on that looks amazing that looks great and I will definitely be posing this predator like this because it's just awesome that we have the big retractable spear on this guy so that's our Predator 2 pack for this year. There's some stuff about it I love, some stuff about it I hate. But overall, I'm going to recommend it. And I really wish I could recommend this as two separate pieces. The Berserker Predator is cool, but if you're not as obsessive about Predator collecting as I am, then it's completely useless. It's an interesting little novelty piece, but nothing more. However, the Masked City Hunter, I think, is a must-own. So I really am torn on which way to go with this figure set. Overall, I think I'm going to lean on the side of slightly recommending it. I feel like it could have been a stronger pack. Different hand with the City Hunter would have really helped. But they gave us enough extra accessories. I mean, we got the two skulls again. We have two different spears, two different blades, another smart disc. You get a lot of stuff for your money. It costs about as much as two figures, so it's not really much of a price difference. Maybe it would have hurt a little less if it came out a little further away from when we just gotten three brand new Predator figures. But still, I'm still riding high on the, the Predator love here. Even though I think this might be the closest I've come to not recommending one of the newer NECA Predators. But still, gonna recommend it. This is a Toys R Us exclusive, so that's where you gotta head to pick this guy up. This has been another Outside the Box review. Stay tuned for more to come.